What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of Road to Glory. In yesterday's episode, we made it to the top 100. In today's episode, the first opponent we come up against has got an insane 4-1-2-1-2 team. Ibra, Pogba, Vieira, Kante, Koscielny, Smalling, De Gea, uh, Rooney and Walker. It's just, it's an insane team. And this game was unfortunately settled by just one goal. Um, throughout the whole game here, th th this was the first game that put me on tilt because for a game like for a team that he's got, look look at where his defense is when I've got the ball with my defense. He's got six players when he's in attack now with his left forward or whatever. He's still still got six players and the goalkeeper seven players in his own half with a team that good. You don't need to be playing like that. I'm sorry. I know he got the win and it kind of goes hand in hand with his. Hey, you play to win in this game. You play how you want. You play what works for you. But um, this was the first occasion of any game up to date in Foot Champions that we came up against someone who played Park the Bus and it was against someone with an absolutely incredible team. So it tilted me a little bit and uh, really kind of put me on edge for future games. Now in today's episode, once again guys, um, gameplay is going to be in the background. We're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that I got from the comment section. I uh, really appreciate the comments and the support you guys continue to give. I think I'm going to continue at least for the foreseeable future during Foot Champions. I'm going to continue to read comments because I, I think it's good conversation. It helps the series. It helps a lot of you guys out. And a lot of you guys, even though you watch what I do, still have questions about Foot and, and Ultimate Team in general and such to... Uh, to, to help yourselves and that's what we're going to do. So, um, the first thing that I could have done, by the way, to get to, to get past me losing to um, such a, a horrendous player, and like, it's, I'm so 50-50 with it, right? The first thing that I could have done is go on and get a win and that's exactly what I do. The sec like, But I am 50-50 with it because on the one hand, playing against a super team that's ultra defensive or park the bus counter attack, it goes against the spirit of FIFA and it goes against the spirit of fo football. But on the other hand, it's foot champions, man, and you've got to do what you've got to do to win. Like, you've got to do the best you can and the best that you know how to win. So I'm really, like, I'm in a position where I'm, like, like I appreciate the guy and, and what he's gone through to, to get the win. I appreciate the fact that he's given everything he had and, and won how he knew best. But it's unbelievably frustrating. And interesting, I was having a discussion with Bates and Marshall about this. And uh, Mo, if you guys don't know, Mo is, is like a... Uh, just he's he's a he's a monster basically. Mo, he, like he's a guy that gives Bates in his account to last year to open packs on and stuff, and very very nice man. And we were talking about um, real life versus FIFA, and I know FIFA isn't real life, but Park the Bus is in the game because there are teams that like genuinely use Park the Bus as a strategy in real life. The problem with that is is in FIFA. Part the, in real life, part of the bus teams are usually inferior to their opponents. Like, you would get, like, a really low-end team against a superstar team, and they will literally just play... Or, like, best best served is international. When you get, like, a minnow team, like San Marino against England, they literally sit there with just everyone in their box and hope desperately not to concede and hope desperately to get one or two chances in the game to potentially score. But what typically happens is the the, like, superior team will come out on top because they're so far superior. In FIFA, when you have a team sit park the bus, it, it's not necessarily always an inferior team versus superior team, and it's not always even an inferior player versus superior player, but what happens specifically that I don't agree with is that the, the team that isn't on park the bus, whether it be me or if I'm on park the bus, be my opponent, in FIFA, the players don't register that what you now have to do is push up. Like, you have to do it manually. So a lot of people don't understand how to do that and don't know about that. They don't know about team pressing or high pressure. So when my opponent goes on part of the bus, me personally, I go, I either go part of the bus and try and beat them at it, which I'm not, I'm not really good at because I'm terrible at part of the bus, or I will go uh, attacking, high pressure, team pressing, and counter-attack. So I get two centre-backs, stay back. The rest of my team pushes forward and really aggressively tries to get the ball back. More often than not, you will steal the ball. Whether or not you then take your chances is irrelevant, but you have to tell your opponents, your, your players to do that. That's not fair in FIFA. That shouldn't happen in FIFA. What should happen is if someone goes part of the bus, you should immediately, the, the game should recognise that, hey, they're on part of the bus, they're playing super defensive, we should aggress them. Unless, and this is where, again, telling your team what to do is important, unless you're in a d position where you're winning and you don't care to go and get the ball, in which case you should you should tell your team to not get the ball. Like the, 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 the stats shouldn't be you have to tell your team to go and get the ball. That shouldn't be how it works. It should be that you automatically go to get the ball, but you should tell them if you don't want them to get the ball. This opponent we come up against here, guys, 
He was a pro player. Um, our first pro player, coming up against pro players on the road to glory is horrendous, right? Because I don't have a team to compete with these kind of guys. This guy had an amazing team. And it, like, for a pro player, and I, could t and I kind of knew he was a pro before I went into the game because I, I recognized the, the, the Pulse kind of uh, pro team name. I still went into the game anyway, even though my instincts were telling me not to. Um, so I ended up losing the game, and quite considerably. But what I found quite amazing was this pro player against the team that I've got and the, his play style. Now, I've played against many pros before. I've played against some of the best in the world, against Huge Gorilla. I've played against Bruce Granick. Um, I've played, uh, played against Dirty Mike. And like what I got from the pros is that they like to hold the ball but in offensive areas to try and score goals. Like, most pros want to go for the kill and get goal after goal after goal. I found with this guy here, he was more than happy to sit back when he went 1-0 up and just play it around the defence. And I found that, like, truly shocking that a pro player would resort to those sort of tactics against me. Like, I'm not a pro player. I'm not nearly good enough to compete with these kind of teams. You can see he changed his formation. He brought his midfield and defence back. He started with a 4-3-3. But he brought his uh, <clears throat> two CMs to just the outside CM and his, his other centre mid he brought all the way down basically to like uh, like just ahead of the defence. Again, like the pros know how to win better than anyone else. Um, so I was I was a little bit salty with how he played. But at the same time, the fact that I only lost 3-1 and I, I showed you his uh, stuff here because I went and added him as a friend just to see his record because... It was like he was he was a good player. I'm not taking it. I, I, even though he played a bit of a dick, like, you know, passing around a defense and just generally time wasting. Um, he was a fantastic player. And I could tell within like the first five minutes of the game that I was playing against someone who was just far, far better than me. Like I, I knew I was. But um, to come up against a pro to get our third loss against a pro. And, and now with three losses, we got one loss in the first episode that... I literally gave up because I'm an idiot and I, I took a corner in the 90th minute where I should have just seen it through and gone to extra time. Uh, the second game we lost was to a guy who had a super team and played part of the bus and hit me on one counter-attack to score. And the third game we lost was to a pro player. So at this point, we're like, what, 12 or 13 wins and three losses. I can't be mad at this point. But going back to what I was talking about yesterday with how this effect, how foot champions affects you mentally because of the fact you've got to keep going and without pause... I was playing on tilt right now. I just lost to a pro player and it tilted me. How crazy is that? I'm not a pro player. I'm not nearly good enough to play against the pro players. Yet, it still tilted me that I lost to a pro player. That's silly. I should have just been like, okay, he was a pro. He, sh he deserves to get that win. And in actuality, if you check the leaderboards, I believe he finished with 37 wins. <clears throat> so, I lost to a guy quite narrowly at 3-1, who ended up with 37 wins, which actually made me feel like even with this team that we have now in our road to glory, we're only like one notch away from being sort of, you know, 30 plus wins uh, on a weekend, which I find to be absolutely amazing. So that is where we're at, guys, in terms of the gameplay, and uh, you can in enjoy a little bit more gameplay right ahead. Uh, the first first comment I picked up was from uh, X2 Gaming. It says, I thought you were going to live stream your games to YouTube this weekend. I was going to, but it turns out that today, um, the day you're watching this, I had to, I had to go into central London. So I knew that I wasn't going to have time to get my videos prepared and live stream because I was going to be away today. It's currently 8.15 on Monday. Um, and you're probably going to get this video about 10 o'clock on Monday. So that's kind of how pressed for time I am right now. Uh, so that's why I didn't live stream on YouTube this weekend. The next comment was from LM5 Gaming, and he says, "Nep, don't waste your rare contracts on players you're not even using." <coughs> so I had said in a previous video that I was going to sell my rare contracts and just use the bronzes. Um, the reason why I'm using the rare contracts is because of the amount of prizes people are getting. Several things are happening off the back of that. The first thing that's happening is. There are so many packs being opened and so many consumables being sent to the transfer market that the rare contracts are still only 200 coins or 150 if you can get them on open bid. Um, so I wouldn't even be making that many coins from them. Like last year they were like five, 600 coins. It was worth selling them. You know, 10 of them were worth 6,000, whereas now 10 are worth maybe 1,500 after tax, 1,300. Like not really worth it when I could just apply them to my players and use them for games. And number two is that we we also are getting so many packs because of Foot Champions and the, and the qualifications that are offering packs and such as well that um, <clears throat> I've just got an abundance of them and, and I might as well use them. It's, it's not like for the 150 coins per contract, it's not really hurting me to use them. Uh, we end up getting into Silver 1, guys, with 14 wins. And I was absolutely blown away that at this stage, 
In our road to glory, we are 14 wins and one loss. And the next person we come up against got a very, very nice team. Another solid, solid team. And it was another player that played on part of the bus. It was so frustrating. It seemed like, like everyone, after the first two weeks, it seemed like every player got fed up of people playing part of the bus. So they stopped doing it themselves. And it was really enjoyable. I was actually really enjoying Foot Champions. Win or lose, I was enjoying it because the gameplay was fun this week. Like, I wasn't coming up against part of the bus often. Um... I was having really open games with people, you know, even the game that I lost um, in yesterday's episode. I still enjoyed that game because I, I controlled the game and I dominated the game and, and I lost because of my own, uh, you know, my own errors. But um, yeah, this, this game was like really frustrating that uh, my opponent, again, you can't see it here because I'm 1-0 up. But as soon as he gets, I think as soon as he gets back to 3, as soon as he gets back to 2-2, two, two, I believe, sorry, I think he goes part of the bus at that point. But uh, that's why I use the contracts. Uh, Dara Padden says, team looking good. You should do a double upload on Saturday and Sunday with Foot Champions or don't edit it and put in one big video. I, I actually agree with that. And that comment's got quite a lot of thumbs up as well. And I agree. Um, I was going to do more video, more games per video and have longer videos. But I think what I'm going to do instead is do uh, more uploads um, and, and keep it to 10, 10 games per episode. So today we're going to go to game 20. Um, and then tomorrow being Tuesday, I'll double upload tomorrow games 21 to 30 and 31 to 40. And then Wednesday we'll be back back with uh, um, qualification and such. Now the goal I lost to in this game was a near post corner. Do you know how frustrating that is? Losing to something that should have been patched. Like obviously when they patch corners, it shouldn't be a situation where you can never score from corners again. But it definitely was annoying. Uh, losing to the guy when um, you know most of his shots were long shots and and uh, you know he scored off of a off of a corner to to essentially win the game. So we now get a fourth loss. One loss was my fault for defending stupid. One loss was against a, a super team part of the bus counter attack. One loss was to a pro and one loss was to a near post corner. Out of those four games, three of them, not including the game against a pro player, three of them could quite easily have become wins to the point where we could be on you know. 15 or 16 wins and one loss, not 13 or 14 wins and four losses. So I, I was, you know, I was tilting myself, even though we're in a position that is amazing. Like, on the Road to Glory account, gold three is where I should be. Gold two is where I would like to be. And gold one is like the promised land. And I'm, I'm like getting wins to, that's going to likely put me up towards getting to elite, maybe even top 100. And I'm still tilted. And that just goes to show how much... I'm investing into this. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why I was playing on tilt. I was, I was, you know, I was getting, even in the games I was winning, I was, like, agitated and angry. And at that point, I should just give FIFA a break for a while and come back at a future time. But I didn't. Uh, P PBJ Brooks says, Net, the majority of your shots say they have about three bars of power and going to the bottom corner. How do you do driven finishes? So, driven finishes, you power up using uh, B or circle, or if you use PES controls, X or square. Um... Once you've powered up, let go and tap it again, and it will drive the shot across uh, across the floor. It's such an overpowered shot technique, and you'll see in the last episode and in this episode, the amount of goals I score using it, specifically with him who just scored there, Hyung Min Son, is unreal. Like, he, in general, has just flown up in my expectations in this, you know, this Foot Champions. Last Foot Champions, we got him halfway through, and we used him, and he was all right, not great. This time around, I really tried to use his strengths. You know, I'm trying to grow as a FIFA player. And what I looked at his card beforehand and I was like, okay, what's super about him? He doesn't have skill moves, which is annoying. He only has three star, even though I like, uh, you know, I like the skill moves. I like the scoop turn specifically. Um, but what he does have is he's six foot tall. He's got pretty good strength. He's fast and he's got a five star weak foot. So what I started doing was just taking random driven shots from just outside or just inside the area. And the amount of times that it went in was crazy. I'm talking crazy. I was so shocked at how many times it went in. And it's going to change how I play next week again now. Because I'm going to build the team a little bit differently for next week. To really influence who and how I'm taking shots. So uh, that's how you do that shot though. It's pretty easy. Um, Israel Asensal says, Nep, if you're reading this, can you give advice for people who get FIFA 17 only when it's out in the vault? Um, I will do, dude, but I'll do it when it's out in the vault because then it's easier for me to assess where the game is and what we've got going forward, if you if you get me. But yes, I will indeed give advice um, when it's out in the vault. Uh, Jamie96 says, I feel like 10% of your videos are you, either you or your opponent doing a dab. Can you please stop? No. Dab for life. I'm all about that dab. 
I, for me right now, it's natural instinct. I don't do it on purpose. And in fact, I, I, I don't, I literally just don't even mean to do it. It's just after I score, my fingers just go bum bum bum, and I don't even mean to do it. I don't. I, I will try and force myself to stop doing it because. It is a frustrating celebration to watch, I understand, but at the end of the day, it is just a celebration. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll try my best to stop. But look, if my opponent's going to dab me, I mean, you, you know, you've got to dab back, haven't you? Um, Robert Ray says, Net been a fan for years and love the Rose Glory. Do you think it's a good idea to have an incentive thing during games? So if someone stopped playing for like five minutes, real lifetime, then they get kicked or something like Cobb do? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see that in FIFA. I'd love to see like a, you know, when someone puts their controller down because they've been beaten or whatever, just have a force quit thing after like, I don't know, what would you say is fair, like 15 in-game minutes? I'd say that's pretty fair. Um, at, yeah, I don't know, I, I would like that. I would enjoy that for sure. Um, Mohamed Solwa says, this video makes me want to get Son. And yeah, somebody made a comment in the last video, um, why, you know, why, haven't you, uh, why haven't you addressed how good Son has been for you? Um, it's, it just didn't come up really, but yeah, Hyung Min Son was absolutely outstanding for me for sure. Um, Abdullah Bayer says, really love your Vidznep, keep up the good work. I can't score with my strikers on this game for some reason or even get them involved, so you give, can you give some tips? Um, <clears throat> no, my, my, my attacking play isn't up to scratch right now. I know I do score quite a lot of goals, this one, and especially with Son, and there's another driven shot that goes in from him. Um, my biggest tip is to not be scared to shoot because weird angle shots go in this year. The low driven shots are really powerful. The um, Cross body shot from uh, from range is quite powerful, the long one. Um, but ultimately, you've you've just got to find a play style that suits you and learn to accept where your skill bracket is so that you can improve. If you're the kind of person like I used to be, like you know FIFA 15 and, and prior, where I, I had the mentality of I'm great, I'm the best, I you know I, how did I lose that? The game's screwing me. You're never going to get better as a player. But if you have the mentality of okay, this is where I am, this is where I sit, you know this is how good I am, these are my faults, how do I better them, you'll get better. But the only way you can do that is by finding something you enjoy and then trying to work on it. So if you find a play style that you like, a formation that you like, that fits players that you like, find that, play a few games, learn from your mistakes and grow as a player and, and you will become better. And there's, uh, there's quite a few more comments here but uh, I'm running out of time in the video. Um, Jericho says, Substance, you're ruining around him. My question is, happened, what, what happened with Elden Nero? Nothing. I love Elden Nero. I actually spoke to him today. Um, he just doesn't do YouTube anymore. It wasn't a viable source of income for him, so he had to go back to getting uh, what we would call a real job. But uh, we end up turning that game around, guys, in extra time. We won it 5 4 with two Theo Walcott goals. A really, really even game that I managed to sneak out on top of and grab a win for. I think after 20 games, I think we were at 16 wins, which is sensational like I was so happy after 20 games with getting 16 wins I couldn't believe it we're two wins away already from gold three which is the the kind of minimum standard that I'd like to get to with 20 games remaining if I don't finish in at least gold three I haven't done things right for the rest of this but guys this is going to be the end of the episode for today if you did enjoy it be sure to leave a like rating comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already but for now guys I'm out peace